Well, hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you a video that is coming from, I'm not really sure where, but um, it is showing what's really happening in Bolivia right now. And they say it's a racist coup in Bolivia. And what I saw of the video, I thought they could be right. So in any case, I thought I'd uh, translate it um, and show you what's going on over there in Bolivia. So here goes. Oh, by the way, my name is Mara Carranza. I'm uh, with AmloVision and I'm working with RBC International due to the invitation of um, Mr. Ricardo Belmont Casanelli, its founder and its uh, promoters. Anyway, uh, I, I'm also, uh, it will be in Spanish, so I'm going to make a little intro for the Spanish speaking people. Hola amigos y amigas, este, voy a hacer una traducción de un video que viene de de un lugar que habla hispana, no estoy segura de dónde, pero quería que viéramos lo que está pasando en realidad en Bolivia. Y lo voy a dejar que salgan los dos uh, lenguajes uh, bastante recio, um, así es que se puede oír en español o en inglés. Ok, aquí vamos. So they're saying right there, the Bible is returning back to the palace of the government. And they said, not the Pachamama, but now Christ is returning here to the palace of the government. So this is um, showing the leader of the pro uh, protest against the government. El multimillonario Luis Fernando Camacho. The multimillionaire Luis Fernando Camacho. Entrando al Palacio Presidencial de Bolivia. Was entering into the presidential palace of Bolivia. Sin que la policía ni los militares pongan resistencia. And the police nor the military resisted him. Un palacio presidencial sin Evo Morales. So there's a presidential palace now without Evo Morales. Its president. Horas antes, Morales fue obligado a renunciar al cargo. Hours before that, Evo Morales was forced to refuse to uh, abandon his uh, position as president. Pese a su victoria en la primera ronda de elecciones presidenciales, uh, due to his um, winning the first round of the electoral um, ballots. Del 20 de octubre. This was on the 20th of October. El mandatario presentó su renuncia. So the, the president uh, turned in his, um, what is it when you, when you quit your job? <laughs> I can't, his resignation. <laughs> Tras denunciar un golpe de estado en su contra. Because they had already started a uh, coup an, against him. Y por la ola de violentos estudios instigados por la oposición, and because of the violent disturbances that were caused by the opposition. Que le de fraude, eh? Because they were accusing him of fraud Las in the elections. Now, mind you, at this time on the 20th, they still, um, they still hadn't finished getting the, uh, they still hadn't gotten the full review of the, of the ballots. They only had the preliminary ballots. And he says, it is my obligation to look for peace. And it is very painful. Because uh, Bolivian men and women are confronted. And it is very painful. 
that these men and women and the civic people from uh, uh, the ones that are, have lost now they've gone to violence and they've gone to aggression and they're attacking the Bolivians male and female and for this and many other reasons I am renouncing the presidency and I will send my uh, renouncement letter to the uh, um, Bolivian um, court or whatever it is they have to put it into. And so he said he was trying to prevent more bloodshed in Bolivia. That's why he uh, went ahead and uh, renounced his post. And he said that was the principal reason why he renounced his post. Poco después, el mandatario tuvo que abandonar el país con destino a México. And a few hours later, or a little bit later, he had to leave the country. A bordo de un avión del Comando de la Fuerza Aérea Mexicana. And he went aboard a uh, airplane of the Mexican Air Force. En un intento por salvar su vida y la de su familia. In an attempt to save his family and that of, I'm sorry, his life and that of his family. Ante la persecución inclemente. Due to the inclement persecution. De grupos de la oposición en contra de funcionarios de... Because there were groups of the opposition that were against the functioning officials. El gobierno boliviano. Of the Bolivian government. Pero su partida hacia México no fue tarea fácil. But his leaving Mexico was not an easy job. El avión partió de Bolivia pese a los intentos de los militares bolivianos de... And the um, plane left from Bolivia even though they were attempting to hold him back from the military. De cerrarle el paso. And they tried to close the exit. Ya en el aire, el avión casi se precipita por la falta de combustible. While they were in the air, it almost went down because they were short on uh, fuel. Todo por un movimiento coordinado de varios países. Due to a coordinated movement of various uh, countries. Que le negaron su espacio aéreo. That denied them their airspace. Para rehabilitar el combustible. So that they could uh, refuel. Finalmente Morales pisó suelo mexicano. Finally. Evo Morales stepped on Mexican soil. El gobierno del presidente López Obrador le concedió asilo político. And the government of Mexico, López uh, Obrador, uh, granted him asylum in Mexico. Un miembro del equipo de seguridad. A member of the uh, security group. Del ejército. Of the military. Me informó informed me and he caused me to read he made me read messages and commented on some uh, calls and he asked me that I uh, to take those in exchange for $50,000 La oposición minoritaria en el Parlamento de Bolivia. So the opposition, which was a minority in Bolivia, proclamó a la vicepresidenta segunda. Proclaimed the vice president, uh, the second in line. El Senado. To the Senate. Yanine Áñez. Yanine Áñez. Como presidenta interina del país. As an interim president of the country. La autoproclamación de Áñez. Se... So she self-proclaimed herself, Ms. Áñez. Produjo en una sesión legislativa sin that she produced in a legislative session Gurn. without the rest of the people present. Los parlamentarios del movimiento al socialismo. So the parliamentary people that were there uh, uh, with the socialists. El partido político de Morales. The um, political party of Morales. No asistieron a la sesión. 
did not assist to the session Por falta de garantías de seguridad. due to a lack of a guarantee of security. Asumo de inmediato. And she said, I assume immediately del Estado, the presidency of the state en el orden constitucion that is pre, um, um, pre visualized in the constitutional order. Y me comprometo a and I commit myself a asumir todas las medidas to go to all measures necesarias para in order to cause uh, peace el país. or to pacify the country. Morales consideró lo ocurrido como el golpe más artero y nefasto de la historia. And uh, Evo González, I'm sorry, Morales, uh, considered this to be the most um, uh, worst uh, case of a uh, coup that's ever been in history. Sin importar estos argumentos legales que invalidan la auto Even though there were arguments that invalidated de Añez. the self-proclamation of Añez. And I'm going to read this to you. It says, uh, a senator of the right side that um, was in the coup self-proclaimed herself president at the Senate and then uh, the president inside of Bolivia without quorum and legislation uh, around this group of compl uh, complices and she was uh, supported by the FFAA and the police and they rep they're repressing the people. Estados Unidos y sus aliados en la Organización de Estados Americanos. So the United States and their allies in the United States or the United Nations. Se apresuraron a reconocerla como. They hurried up to recognize her. Presidenta interina de Bolivia. As the interim president of Bolivia. La violencia y la persecución contra la comunidad indígena no cesaron en Bolivia. And they did not stop the persecution and attack on the people in Bolivia. Tell me your name, please. She says, my name is Claudia Quispe, and I want to denounce. I live in this zone, Yobahuyo. I want to uh, denounce that at this moment, our, uh, our brothers that are working in the fields, in Chapare, in Chayapata, Camino Aururo, in by La Paz, they're being killed cruelly by the military of Bolivia. Desde México, Morales denunció el golpe de Estado. And from Mexico, Morales denounced the uh, coup. E instó a la derecha boliviana a cesar la masacre. And he asked them to stop the massacring. Les dijeron, si se va. But they told me that if I left, hemos llamado, hemos denunciado, and then we've left and we've given our, our um, we've given up our post to the legislative plurinational. So please stop. Why do you continue? Why are you still continuing with the violence? And also this leader was Uh, lamenting that he had had confidence in the OEA, which is the organization of the United States that was supposed to make sure that it, uh, like, you know, like, kind of like an overseer of the ballots. Bueno, para la auditoría de las elecciones. They were there to audit the uh, um, election um, ballots. Ahora me cuenta, saludo las recomendaciones. So now I understand, according to the recommendations from my brothers that um, are on the left, that the OEA is not at the service of the Latin American people. 
So they're saying this is the reality here. And you see us, we're still fighting. Please let them know in your groups. Please send it to the press. So the coup had attacked um, that that ca uh, had caused many protests in Bolivia against the interim self-proclaimed president. And they were giving showing their support for Evo Morales. And these manifestors demand the return of this uh, president that's socialist. We are here mobilized because we want our uh, political constitution respected. And we profoundly, uh, uh, when they don't want, they did disavow this uh, attack on the state or this coup and this one who has self-proclaimed proclaimed herself as president and we as social organizations we have always been respectful humble to the to the head of our brother, the president. To the whole world, she says. I want to say to the international press. In the in the news, they're showing that the that the, our country is tranquil. That everything is normal. That nothing is happening. That everything is going well and pretty. No, it is not that way. Today, here, we are not well. All the provinces, the only ones that are helping us are, are the radios. The radios are the only ones that are helping us. And the lady, uh, uh, Janine Yanes, who is Añez, who is the self-proclaimed uh, president. And she said, we're going to do something against the rural radios because they're not informing correctly. According to the Bolivian electoral law, the winner of the presidential elections must must win with uh, more than 50% of the votes or obtain at the very least 40% of the votes but he has to have an advantage of at least 10% or more over the next candidate that has the most votes besides him. Los detractores del presidente dimisionario so the detractors of the president denuncian una demora en el conteo de los votos said that there was a delay in the counting of the votes como un indicio de fraude electoral like a uh, electoral fraud pero Morales afirma que la demora se debió a but Morales uh, attests that the uh, delay had something to do with la recepción de los votos en las zonas rurales with the uh, delay of getting the votes from the z rural zones Donde él con una where he counted in on a considerable advantage a sus due, uh, a against his rivals. Después, los and then after we got the information Más como boca de urna, at the mouth of the urn they said that we there was a difference of 7% and all I said was please let's wait for the votes from the rural areas
and they said that most of his votes come from the uh, uh, field laborers and the ones that are out um, in the outward areas since 1925. And according to the original ciphers, um, Morales was the winner. He had 47.08% of the votes. And the nearest candidate had 36.5%. El ex -presidente Carlos Mesa. And that was the ex-president, Carlos Mesa. Yeah. Oh my God, they're kicking someone. Las protestas postelectorales en Bolivia estuvieron marcadas por hechos de violencia. De the elections were marked by violence. Carácter racista. In a racist character. Anti-indígena y neofascistas. They were against the indigenous and neo-fascists. Days before the renouncement of the president, they took this lady who was a mayor in the party of Morales, and it moved many in the world. Because this candidate, I mean this um, Alcalde, I believe it's the mayor, uh, was dragged through the city streets. La calle, obligada a caminar descansa. And she was forced to walk barefoot. La montaron sobre una tarima para cortarle el cabello y... And they uh, put her on top of something so they could cut her hair off. Echarle pintura roja. And then they throwed through red paint on her. Los agresores la insultaron. The aggressors insulted her. Y la obligaron a decir que dejaría el cargo. And they forced her to say that she would leave her post. And they're saying, you must renounce, you must renounce. And she says, the press, is it going to be showing this? También incendiaron la alcaldía. And they also burned down the um, the uh, place where the um, mayor's um, office was. Bolivia logró salir adelante y al but Bolivia came out ahead. Favorables índices económicos como and they had gotten very favorable um, growth indexes. Morales. Pero un golpe de estado con as well as cultural, but then an attack on the state, a coup, de racial, was because of racial segregation, más de una de puts at risk a whole decade of advancement. De acuerdo con la antropóloga Francisca Fernández. According to the anthropologist Francisca Fernández. Este fue un golpe realizado por la ultraderecha. This was a coup that was organized by the ultra-right. Que reactivó el viejo conflicto entre las zonas altas. That reactivated the old conflict between the high areas. El altiplano y el mundo indígena. And the, uh, the low plain and the indigenous and the rest of the world versus la zona baja en el sector oriental versus the low zone in the sector of the orient del país caracterizada por cierto fanatismo that was characterized by certain uh, Christian fanaticism y un marcado racismo and marked racism hacia los sectores against the uh, indigenous sectors indígenas varios países latinoamericanos various uh, Latin American countries, Como Argentina, México, like Argentina and Mexico, Cuba, Nicaragua, Cuba, Cuba and Nicaragua, y Venezuela, and Venezuela, condenaron el golpe de estado con, condemned the coup, an attack on the state, el gobierno de Morales, against the uh, government of Morales. El presidente venezolano Nicolás Maduro, the uh, Venezuelan uh, president uh, Maduro. Aseguró que Estados Unidos estuvo detrás del plan golpista. And they assured that the United States was behind this coup. 
esta emboscada que se montó contra Evo Morales se montó desde el imperialismo norteamericano. So they're saying that this, um, what do you call emboscada? Emboscada is when you have someone sabotage or um, get you, um, yeah, kind of like sabotage, like when they catch you by surprise. Uh, they said it was um, uh, set by, um, done by the United States, the North Americans. Y hoy sacan la cara a aplaudir. And now they take out their face to applaud. Y a decir que ahora vienen por Venezuela y Nicaragua. And now they're saying they're coming for Venezuela and Nicaragua. Un informe del portal Breaking Bad Doors. So there is an information that uh, is set out behind back doors. Oye la afirmación de Maduro. Supports the uh, affirmation of Maduro. Hace más de un mes, el portal reveló un plan secreto internacional para... They, about a month ago, they had uh, revealed an international plan... A derrocar a Morales. To take uh, Morales down. Proporcionando nombres y datos de las... And they gave the names and dates Personas y los gobiernos directamente in of the names and the governments directly involucrados en el golpe. that were involved in the attack. Okay, so I'm going to read it. It says, from the territory of the United States, a coup d'etat against the Bolivian President Evo Morales develops gradually. It is intended to be carried out at the end of 2019 presumably after the elections of March 2020. The main operatives are the Bolivian politicians Gonzalo uh, Sanchez de Lozada, Manafred Reyes Villa, Mario Cosio, and Carlos Sanchez Berzayan, all residents of the USA. They coordinate the actions in Bolivia with the leaders of the opposing association Coordinadora Nacional Militar, opposed, uh, composed of former army officers of the Bolivian Army, among them General Rumberto Siles, uh, Colonels uh, Julius Maldonado, Oscar Pacello, and Cal Carlos Calderon. Um, now, I had already heard about this before and I just couldn't find it, um, but I had already uh, heard about this behind back doors from someone called Halife, who is a uh, geopolicist who is world renowned. He's taught at Yale, uh, Harvard, um, many of those uh, great institutions, educational institutions. And he had warned about this, and he even told us where to go look at this behind back doors. Um, it's like a government uh, place where they <laughs> they have all these weird secret things. But anyway, um, let's go on and hear the rest. En detalle, el reporte cita explícitamente a políticos bolivianos como Gonzalo Sánchez de Lozada y Manfred Reyes, a militares como el general Rumberto Siles y Carlos Calderón. También citaba a los senadores republicanos Ted Cruz y Marco Rubio. Y... So they're telling you exactly the stuff I just told you a minute ago. Okay, so now I didn't see the bottom part here. It says, besides, they coordinate with high leaders of the Bolivian opposition, mostly Waldo Albarracin, president of the National Democracy Democratic F Federacy, C-O-N-A-D-E, by its acronym in Spanish, uh, Jaime Antonio Al. Alarcón Daza, president of the Civic Committee of La Paz, Jorge Quiroga, former president of Bolivia, Juan Carlos Rivero, Rolando Villena, former uh, ombudsman, and Samuel Doria Medina from the National Unity Party. All of them are held responsible for supplying the funds that are being shipped from the United States for this operation, as well as guaranteeing the expected actions to create a state of social crisis and, and convulse the country before October 20th, the electoral date. Wow. You guys, this was already written and had already been pointed out to us about a month ago, but 
everybody thought it was like an exaggeration. Y el demócrata Bob Menéndez como cerebros de la operación. Estos tres senadores. These three senators. Que es una acción bipartidista. They had uh, done a uh, bipartisan action from the Democratic Party. El Partido Demócrata y el Partido Republicano. From the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. They uh, got together and agreed. Se han puesto de acuerdo para prever y tener un cuidado en que Bolivia no cae. So they were supposed to be making sure that um, Bolivia does not fall. Um, because they did not want what was happening in Venezuela and Nicaragua to happen there. Otro informe del sitio de Grayson vincula a Luis Fernando Camacho con planes para asesinar a Morales. And there was also another plan for Camacho to assassinate Morales. Y destaca que fue preparado por la Unión Juvenil Cruceñista. And that was prepared by the Juvenile Cruz... Uh, UJC. So there it is. Luis Fernando Camacho was prepared by the Union of Juvenile Crucista, an organization of paramilitary fascists that has been uh, put together in planes to assassinate uh, Morales. The group is famous for attacking leftists uh, uh, the uh, field workers of the indigent, uh, newspaper people, and adopting an ideology that is racist and homophobic. Una organización paramilitar fascista que ha sido vinculada con planes de asesinato a Morales. Oh. El grupo es famoso por atacar a izquierdistas, campesinos indígenas y periodistas, adoptando una ideología racista y homofóbica. So for the pay, uh, for our country and for the people of Bolivia, I do swear. Evo Morales, que asumió la presidencia de Bolivia en 2006. Evo, Boli uh, Evo Morales assumed the presidency of Bolivia in 2006. Se postuló a las elecciones después de que el Tribunal Supremo Electoral dictaminó que el límite de dos periodos para el mandato presidencial. And he was, um, he went again for the position after the Electoral College said that two terms for a uh, president constituía una violación a los derechos humanos del gobernante would uh, cons constitute a um, it would be against the human rights of the president y autorizó a él y a su vicepresidente al and they authorized him and his vice president Paro García Linera a volverse a postular como candidatos to allow they allowed them to become candidates again habilitando a que a esas personas a postularse quien en definitivamente quien definitivamente elige es el pueblo boliviano so they're saying that um, of course so there was a change in the constitution um, after uh, Evo became president uh, before that they didn't have a uh, number of terms that you could uh, stay in office but After he had been in office, they decided to make it a, a two-time limit. But then the, um, I guess their Supreme Court or something, said that it was unconstitutional to do that after he had already served or while he was in office. And so they gave him uh, the right to run again. Los que implica justamente lo que dispone la Constitución Política del Estado because it implies exactly what is written in the Constitution. Implica también al presidente y vicepresidente de Estados Unidos. And that includes the president and the vice president. En sus años en el poder, so in his years in power, Evo Morales adoptó importantes medidas he adopted uh, important measures para nacionalizar los recursos naturales to nationalize the natural resources, Tales como el gas. like gas. Y la de los del gas natural. So he said the property of the, hydrocarbon, uh, the hydrocarbons of natural gas que pasan a partir de este a manos del are going to go back from this day forth 
to the people of the of uh, Bolivia. Bajo el control del Bolivariano, and they're going to be under the control of the Bolivian people. Es la solución a los problemas económicos. And this will be the solution to our economical problems. A los problemas sociales de nuestro país. And the social problems of our country. Además, la Bolivia de Morales se and besides that, the Bolivia of Morales se convirtió en un miembro clave del eje bolivariano. It became a critical part or um, like, uh, it was like a crux um, for, for, the, for the Bolivian people. Esperado por el expresidente venezolano Hugo Chávez. That was uh, condemned by Hugo Chávez, the ex-president que fundó organizaciones regionales como el ALBA y la CELAT. Who uh, formed uh, some uh, organizations like ALBA and CELAT. De las que formaba parte Bolivia. Which Bolivia had formed parts of. Morales también estableció relaciones estratégicas con Rusia y China. And he also established strategic relationships with Russia and China. Los rivales Estados Unidos. And the rivals were the United States. Y estableció vínculos con Irán. And he uh, also had um, uh, some uh, treaties with Iran. Al que defendió ante la ONU frente a las sanciones de Estados Unidos. Which he defended against the sanctions of the United States. Ahora, que Irán ha retomado el control de sus recursos. Because now that Iran has taken the control of its own resources, es de now they are the victims of the United States. Bolivia, Bolivia refuses categorically these unilateral uh, actions taken por de by the United States government en de Irán. against Iran. En los 13 años de Morales, el... In the 13 years of Morales, okay, you guys, that whole thing with Iran is probably the reason why the U.S. is attacking them. Producto interno bruto de Bolivia. The internal uh, product, it's like the gross national product. Pasó de 9 mil millones. Came to be over 9,000 million. A 40 mil millones. To 40 million. Mientras que la pobreza extrema pasó del 38 por... While the extreme poverty went from 38% al 15% down to 15% según CEPAL. As a, according to what their um, organizations that count. En este periodo, el país creció con una tasa promedio del 4.9. And during this period, the uh, country grew at 4.9% annually. 9% al año. Yearly. El Fondo Monetario Internacional. The National Monetary Fund. Proyecta en un 2% para el cierre de este año el crecimiento en And they had projected a uh, 2% uh, by the end of this year in Bolivia. Bolivia. Evo Morales afirma que lo que hizo que su gobierno fuera derrocado por los propietarios del So, Evo Morales affirms that what caused uh, the um, um, coup in Bolivia Poder económico. and uh, from the economic powers Fueron sus planes para capacitar a la población indígena. Was, were his plans to help capacitate the indigenous people y sectores históricamente marginados en and sectors of, the, of Bolivia that were historically margined off. País. And when I had my baby, I didn't have to pay anything in the hospital. And they covered everything and they've helped me a lot with the, uh, like financial? So that I can buy the milks and, and the diapers. Wow. Wow, you guys. Um, this was... Wow. <laughs> um, I know, I know that the U.S. had a hand in it. 
and I had seen these things um, that were in that back door. Um, you know, I had seen it, but I didn't get a chance to read it because it went too fast. Um, but I had heard about it. They said, yeah, there was a coup already planned by the U.S. Um, and they had already named everybody that was going to be involved and that it was going to happen to Morales before the election day. So this is only a surprise to the Americans that don't get the news that actually is the truth. Because um, most of it that we're fed are lies. Uh, in fact, I don't even know if this will go out. But I'm going to try because I think we need to know what's happening because it might come down on us. Because now the world's going to be angry at us because everybody else knows what's happening except for us. Um, we need to, to help them. We need to help those people. They're shooting them down everywhere right now. Uh, I've been looking at uh, some of the videos. It is absolutely unbelievable what's happening. They're shooting them. Um, they're... they're it's really ugly in Bolivia right now. And you say, what do I care about Bolivia? I'm here in the U.S. The problem is that they're human beings and that the U.S. had a hand in causing what's happening to them. And we have to have a hand in helping it stop. Please, don't ignore this. We've got to do whatever is necessary to help them. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.